Yellowstone supervolcano. The magma chamber has been found to be four times bigger than originally thought. This is how the USGS found it. Now, they've been finding various things lately concerning Yellowstone. They found that the magma chamber was huge, that it was two and a half times bigger than originally thought. Now they say it's four times bigger than originally thought. Uh, the video before this one shows that the area of the uh, underneath the magma reservoir is actually a mantle plume that is connected to the Earth's core. And one of the few places on Earth that has a mantle plume, another one, for example, is Hawaii. And uh, this is what's causing the geysers and the hydrothermal activity to be so strong in this area of the world, in Yellowstone. It has over 60% of the world's geysers. It's got over 10,000 hydrothermal areas, not, of, not all of which have been discovered by uh, and uh, examined by the U.S. Uh, geologists because there's so many. But this is a new finding. Calamore Express UK from USGS information. The scientists at Yellowstone supervolcano discovered the huge magma chamber below the caldera is actually four times bigger than they originally thought. Uncovered findings reveal. Yellowstone gets its name and that it's a supervolcano, its uh, characterization, because it's able to inflict a devastation on a worldwide level. And below the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho is where it's located. It's constantly monitored by the USGS, as we know. They have their Yellowstone Volcano Observatory there. It was established in 2001. And they're monitoring for signs that a super eruption could be on its way, for example. But researchers at the University of Utah were left stunned because they discovered the produced images of a reservoir of hot, partly molten rock, 12 to 28 miles under the surface. We know that the University of Utah is also responsible for monitoring the earthquakes there. Now, the hot rock in the chamber is, they say, 4.4 times larger than the shallower, long-known tunnel previously mapped out. Xin Hua Huang led the research in 2015, said, for the first time we have images, the continuous volcanic plumbing system under Yellowstone. That includes the upper crustal magma chamber, we have seen previously pulls a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imaged before and that connects to the upper chamber the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below so you have the under the surface basically the magma chamber under that you have something like three or four times as big the magma reservoir and under that you have this huge magma plume which of course under that is connected to the Earth's core Jamie Farrell the, is the co-author of this paper. She emphasized that the discovery does not mean that Yellowstone is any closer to erupting. Uh, all, just that the magma chamber and reservoir are not getting any bigger than they have been. It's just that now we can see them better using new techniques and imaging. Another co-author said, Fan Chi Lin said, it gives us a better understanding of the Yellowstone magmatic system and now we can use these new methods to better estimate the potential seismic and volcanic hazards. Now, back in 2004, the scientists of uh, the Geological uh, Survey discovered something unusual was happening inside Yellowstone Park. The rangers discovered, unfortunately, five bisons had died overnight near a geyser. Hank Hessler investigated the mystery and he said they weren't in a typical death pose kind, like a cat that's curled up. It looked like they had just toppled over as they were walking. They just fell over. 
and we think that it was just a very cold night, a very still night. The geothermal gas is accumulated and then the bison just basically dropped where they were standing or where they were walking. So basically that has to do with the uh, supervolcanoes gas emissions. On reflection, the scientists came to the conclusion the bison uh, had uh, breathed in the toxic mix of gas created by the magma below Yellowstone National Park. That happens. We saw that lately with what happened uh, at the earthquake, the 6.4, 7.1 earthquakes that we had in Ridgecrest in um, Southern California, in the Mojave Desert, July 4th and 5th, that the bees just dropped dead. Some of them were lying on their backs with their little legs flittering, uh, before they gave up their little bee ghosts. And uh, that happens too. The animals suffer too. The gases are very strong for the little bodies. They're susceptible. They're very susceptible. So this is probably what happened to the five bison that they found as well. And also, uh, the, from the heat, we have tree sections of trees in the park dying. And also from the gases, sections of uh, uh, dead trees in the area. I'll leave links below for you for this. Yellowstone Caldera, well, Yellowstone Observatory, you study under, under gas, okay? Current alerts under gas. You study reveals gassy link to past earthquake swarm. This dated October 1st, 2001. This is the lake over the caldera. And uh, it says the past three years we've witnessed two large earthquake swarms. Yellowstone 2010-2009, recent history tells us that these earthquake swarms are common, but we'd like to know how frequently they have occurred in the more distant past. Bill Evans may have found an answer. Okay, they uh, later on, of course, this is written in 2011, but in the meantime, they've told us that uh, because of the Hebgen Lake 7.1 magnitude earthquake that took place in 1959, that we're still having aftershocks and that these big earthquakes could be aftershocks from that 7.1 magnitude uh, from 1959, from, uh, you know, 60 years ago. Now, the colleagues of uh, USGS, Lone Pine, Yellowstone National Parks, tracked effects of the 1978 swarm at Mud Volcano. Intense swarm lasted about seven months, followed by an increased heat output and dieback of vegetation in the area called Cooking Hill. Hillside, Cooking Hillside. And uh, that's the, that map where we see the general thermal areas, in regions of increased heat and gas discharge. At Yellowstone, emit abundant carbon dioxide, CO2, some of which is incorporated to growing vegetation. Evans wondered whether changing amounts of geothermal CO2 emissions might leave a record in the growth rings of nearby trees, and yes, they do. But uh, uh, and moreover, because the timing of increased gas discharge immediately accompanied the swarm. Here we are. Gas discharge, time, and the gas here. Plot indicating relative strength of CO2, parts per million. Uh, emissions over the time near Cooking Hillside, Mud Volcano, Yellowstone National Park. So you can see the, uh, the CO2 levels are, of course, very high during the quakes. So um, they concluded that the swarm itself may have been caused by increased gas pressures within the geothermal system that underlies the mud volcano and much of the caldera. Similar studies identified changes in gas discharge through studies of three rings at other volcanoes, such as Mammoth Mountain, California. And uh, they hope to apply this technique uh, at other areas of Yellowstone, including ones that were uh, very old trees, had hold clues to earthquake swarms from the past. So uh, that's probably why the little beasties, the little uh, uh, bison fell over, because of the intense gas emissions. And they say that this is a gas that causes the earthquakes. The built-up of the, of the uh, earthquake gases causes the earthquake swarm. Okay, maybe, but also it could, could be because of what they said from the 1959 Hebgen Lake uh, 7.1 magnitude. 
But of course, there's always built up because we have the mantle plume under there as well. It's not just the aftershocks, it's the mantle plume that, when you're talking about a mantle plume, that it does whatever it wants, whenever it wants. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.